Y ahora, nos abrochamos el cinturón. Ponemos la primera velocidad. Pisamos el acelerador. Y comienza el programa. Welcome back. This is Ricardo and this is Garage Latino. Remember, we don't talk about football, basketball, baseball. No, we just talk about engines. We talk about things with wheels. We love this crazy world that uh, we used to call the motorsports and the, the car industry. But everything is changing so fast that pretty soon we're going to have flying cars here in the show. Again, today, I have the pleasure to be with David. David, ¿cómo estás? Hey, uh... Bienvenidos a Garage Latino, that is welcomes to Garage Latino in Spanish, and I am David from Mexico, sí señor. David, David. Eh, David, this week, a couple of things, um, before we forget, when you tell everyone that Garage Latino, it's broadcasted through the Believe Network in the United States, and you can download the podcast um, through Spotify. Something that I, that caught my attention this week is that for is bringing back the electric illuminator engine, which is an electric engine that you can just buy to put in whatever project you want. So you can, you know, make it uh, all fully electric. And uh, for the pricing, we're talking $4,000, 350 foot pound of torque, uh, you know, 24 inches by 24 inches, very small. Uh, do you think people are really going to go for it? Of course they are because uh, you forgot to say that uh, this uh, that Ford is bringing back this motor. It's not that Ford is bringing it. Ford <laughs> is bringing it back through Ford uh, performance as a crate engine, and it's uh, going to be a mighty interesting uh, motor because, of course, it's electric. It's taken from taken from the Mustang uh, Mustang Mach E. And a lot of people are, using, are going to use it for rest of months. That means that you can have your uh, electric, bur uh, electric uh, Thunderbird or your Galaxy or your <laughs> LTD or your Maverick, even oh, your Ford on, Granada. On, on F100 for that matter. Of, of course. <laughs> and of and course. it doesn't have to be really a Ford. I mean, you can put this engine on anything. Oh, of course, yes. But, uh, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> G giving it the uh, giving your uh, resto mod the heart that it rightfully uh, needs. You well, know? I, 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 and, and I, and I guess you can buy multiple engines. I guess you can also put one for the front and one for the rear, and that will give you, it's you know, done. almost 500 horsepower. So uh, th that's done. interesting. So anyway, or I thought that was very, very interesting, uh, and definitely yeah, four thousand bucks, but it's not plug and play because. You have to uh, take into consideration that you have to ins uh, provide your own inverter and your own battery pack. Well, that will be so, for the techie guys so to simple. play with it. That will be, you know, they, they'll love it. They have to create something new. And since we're talking about electric, uh, electric cars, also this week, uh, you know, a car, a, a brand name that has become iconic, not because of the car, but because of movies. <laughs> you know, uh, I think the idea that John Z. DeLorean had when he brought out you know his coupe uh, was awesome the dmg12 I mean, yeah that that car you know that it was all polished no paint uh engine in the back i mean it had a lot of positives unfortunately it did not take off but now it's coming back and it's coming back in style i mean not you know we have giorgetto giugiaro designing the new delorean uh that's that's kind of quite interesting Yes, and, uh, you know, it, it's going to have the uh, Gullwing doors as the original. But one uh, feature that it is this uh, new iteration of the uh, of the DeLorean, which is going to be, uh, well, they, they say it could be called Evolve, and it's going to be unveiled on uh, August 18th in uh, Pebble Beach. This is uh, the one difference that, the, that this uh, vehicle has, besides being electric, which is a huge difference, is that uh, it will be painted. No more brushed <laughs> stainless steel like the original DMC-12. I think they should do a white carbon fiber, you know. I mean, you know, every, everything carbon fiber is black, black, black. They, they, they should find some type of fiber to make it white and then just leave it at that because I'm assuming it has to be all light metals, alloys, and we know that carbon fiber will be uh, the lightest so far. 
But uh, anyway, it's going to be very, very interesting. So now let's switch to something that is more for everyone. Um, I recently drove the new Toyota Corolla Cross, a new entry to the Corolla family that it really puzzled me a little bit because I thought, you know, this is very similar in terms of space, very similar to the RAV4. And it's, it's not going to take customers from the RAV4 now. We have a Corolla Cross that is a, it's basically another crossover. No, you don't think so? no. I I think the I think that the uh, the, the uh, Corolla saw an opening and uh, they took it because they saw uh, a void in the, in the lineup. They saw uh, they they saw a, a space that needed to be uh, filled up, and so they have the um, Corolla Cross uh, underneath the Rap 4 So uh, you may think that the, they are too similar, but no, not 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 really. I mean. It's pretty much like the Ford Escape and the EcoSport, you know, to, to establish some sort right. of analogy. So uh, the Corolla Cross is well differentiated because it's a smaller, it's cheaper, and it's got a, sm it's got a, a smaller uh, engine. Okay? You know, you know that, that two-liter engine that is shared with other platforms within the Corolla, but I have to say the price point is very, very attractive. I mean, you know, getting a Toyota Corolla, cross which is roomy for four nice you know trunk size we know the dependability and for just twenty two thousand dollars that's yeah the, the that's 22, a good deal. 195 uh, base price and you know um now a lot of people don't want to drive to dance no more so you're getting a crossover okay something that, that looks like an off-road vehicle so this is a smaller This is uh, seven uh, one seven uh, one hundred seventy five point six. And you're com you're making the comparison versus, with the with the Rav four. You're making the comparison with the Rav four. I am yes. Okay, the so to the twenty two thousand one ninety five base price for the cross versus twenty six five twenty five of the Rav four. The uh, Corolla cross has a, a two liter, one hundred and sixty nine horsepower engine. The Rav four has a two point five liter with uh, 203 horsepower. Now the length of the uh, Corolla Cross, 176 inches versus 180 inches of the uh, RAV4, which isn't that much, but the big difference would be interior space because the uh, Corolla Cross has 93.8 cubic feet of uh, passenger space versus 99 cubic feet on the uh, RAV4. But the trunk is a huge difference because in the uh, Corolla Cross, the cargo bay has a capacity or a, a volume of 20, 26.5 cubic feet versus 37.6 feet on the RAV4. Uh, they're close. They're close. But I think styling, they're completely different. And I think the RAV4 now, it looks more, I don't know, I want to say rugged, even when they have the adventure version that it has... Uh, the front that is very close to the Tacoma. So definitely I can see where the RAV4 is more of a truck-like look and the Corolla Cross is more car-like, you know. Um, but I, I, like I said, the design, I really like it. I mean, I cannot say much. The interior, I thought it was, you know, pretty simple, basic. Uh, but for that price, it's a Corolla, it's, Ricardo. It's, it's a Corolla, and for that price, and really, you can't ask for 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 a deluxe interior. Um, yeah, not a Lexus. It's a Corolla. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think it's going to do well. I like I said, I, I enjoy the car, and like like a like any Toyota, it's very hard to find anything. Uh, what the good thing that I like now with all these Corollas and with all the Toyotas is the safety sense uh, system that makes it, you know, very difficult for you to crash and very safe oh, if you get into an accident. Oh, don't underestimate the uh, people. Look <laughs> yeah. those people. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, uh, that, that I have to say, it's, it's a really, really nice program. And I'm waiting for the 2023 model because it's a hybrid and it also will be all-wheel drive. And I think the, I'm sure it's going to get closer to 40 miles per gallon. And that's going to be very, very attractive. And I know Toyota is putting, you know, they're talking about electric vehicles because they have to talk about electric vehicles, but they know that the near term, it's all hybrids. And pretty much now Bloody you have hybrids. a hybrid uh, in the, through the whole Toyota line. Um, so I, I think it's a uh, it's car that's going to do well and definitely, um, yeah, something to, 
to consider if you're looking for, for an urban car. Now, I have a question since we're talking about Corolla. Corolla, uh, you know, has brought something else to the market that I'm a little bit shocked. And I want to, you know, spend a little bit of time because I was expecting uh, being a former TRD employee, you know, working and remembering the rally uh, involvement of Toyota during the 70s, 80s, you know, 90s. And the Yaris becomes this monster car that a lot of the fans, they say, hey, I want to have that Yaris. I want to bring the Yaris to the United States. And they only send the engine <laughs> and the, the powertrain. And now we got, we didn't get the Toyota rally, the Toyota rally car. Now we got a monster Corolla, which is the Corolla Gazoo racing version, arriving with 300 horsepower out of a three-cylinder engine. This is Garage Latino. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Remember, Garage Latino is broadcasted through the Believe Network in the United States, and you can download the podcast of Garage Latino through Spotify. Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. We'll be right back. Gracias por participar con nosotros. Garage Latino sale al aire por la cadena nacional Believe Network. Visita la página garagelatino.com, dale un like a Facebook de Garage Latino y envía tus comentarios. Garage Latino está disponible en iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, iTunes, Luminary y por supuesto Spotify. Así que baja el podcast y compártelo con tus amigos. ¡Hasta la próxima!